So hello again, Adam Fairclough from HDTV Test here. I've been told I know a thing or two about HDR. There's an intro that I stole from Vincent. Now, I like that intro because it suggests you're an expert, but it means you're not saying it. Someone else said it. Maybe they said it. Maybe they didn't. But you don't know that. Sounds good, but I don't sound arrogant. That's the plan. Thanks, Vincent. Where is Vinny anyway? Where is he? So Crackdown 3 is a game I've really been looking forward to for a long time. A big, big fan of the original game and its sequel actually. And Crackdown 3 has been shaping up for a long time to look like a game that was going to look great in HDR. So I was really, really pleased to see that it got announced that it supports not only HDR, but it also supports Dolby Atmos as well. Now let's get into the game and maybe do a little bit of the, the setup here. We're going to head on through into options. I'm going to go down to display and we've actually got two settings that are able to adjust here. We've got a brightness setting that when you boot the game up for the first time it's actually going to ask you about this. Uh, this will land on 50%. Now what I've normally been saying with games is to leave this well alone because actually this is often doing a gamma like adjustment or a traditional brightness adjustment for a title existing in SDR land but it's applying that to the HDR game and that doesn't always work very well. However, Crackdown 3 isn't doing that. It actually is making an adjustment that is specific to the HDR image. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this to make the game comfortable to look at in our own lighting conditions. So if you're playing in a light controlled room, then what you're gonna see is you're gonna be able to drop this really, really low. The game describes uh, it as adjusting it until the Crackdown logo is barely visible. For me, barely visible is once, one step or one click away from it disappearing altogether. So for me, it disappears on nine, but it's visible on 10. So I'm gonna leave it on 10. Make sure HDR display is turned on, obviously. This won't actually disable HDR altogether. This will just change the tone mapper's behavior to behave as if it's outputting a regular SDR-like image. So lower peak brightness and contrast and brightness and other things that are applicable to uh, you know that compressed lower dynamic range of, of SDR. Over in HDR settings we've got one setting which is surprising but actually really nice. Now not what we'd normally expect to see here would be a peak luminance setting or a max luminance setting but you probably noticed in the last few videos I've done that I've maybe suggested that that's maybe a little bit a little bit unnecessary because the game is going to produce what the game produces. All you're doing there is you are clamping or restricting the top end brightness and your TV is going to do that anyway. So there's not really much point in just clamping the output when the display is going to do it. Why bother? So this game doesn't give you the option to do that, it's actually one less thing to worry about. Weirdly, a lot of some people struggle to get that that part right when they're when they're setting up. So it's it's done, you know, it's basically done for you by your display. We've got the paper white setting, which will actually land at 200 nits as its default setting when you boot up the game. The actual internals for the game are actually working at 100. So if you are wanting the super super duper correct AV setup then actually 100 is probably where you're going to want to be and you're going to probably want to be like that in um, if you're again if you're in a very very dark room but you know what I've been playing with it on on that default 200 Crackdown isn't a super super accurate game by any stretch of the imagination for its visuals which are like a like a comic book if you've played any of the telltale games it kind of has a similar similar look to those not necessarily cell shaded but certain things have outlines around them certain textures are there just to kind of replicate the paper like effect of of a, of a comic book or a graphic novel the overall lighting setup kind of reflects that as well so it's not it's not an it's not an accurate game however the hdr is brilliant and we've got this you know colliding of two worlds of you know really sophisticated technical lighting with this very comic book like aesthetic for me, I'm going to leave that 
uh, Paperwhite probably on, on 200, but this is a, a really great screen to look at for a couple of reasons. I know people are really, really keen on knowing exactly what settings to use. If you're not interested in hearing what I have to say about the setup for this game. With brightness, if you're in a very, very dark room, you want that on 10. Bring it upwards if you can't see the logo anymore until you just about can. For paper white, we'll set that on 200. If you're in a dark room, you might want to set a little bit lower as low as 100. There we go. So if that's what you wanted to know, thanks for watching. If you want to know other stuff, Stick around because I'm going to carry on talking now. Back to the paper white. One thing that's really interesting about the paper white screen is we actually have a proper HDR image that allows us to see exactly the effect that this setting is having on, on the game. And as a setting that affects, doesn't necessarily affect the peak brightness, but it affects maybe how often you're going to see some of those peak brightness things. Uh, you want to kind of get this right because actually this will help you to deliver that very impactful HDR image. Now this is a really great screen to to show off some other things as well and this is one of the first games I've actually seen which use an actual HDR level image in the background. Quite often I think we've seen this in some examples of this recently. Resident Evil uh, what else does it? Assassin's Creed does it as well, where there is a, some kind of reference image there to use, but it's actually uh, an 8-bit image, you know, it's it's been mapped out to SDR, but it doesn't really tell us a lot and it doesn't really give us any kind of indication on as to what actually is going to change, and it doesn't necessarily reflect the game when you then get into the game. However, this does. Now when content is created, even in SDR, there is or more so in SDR actually, there is a trade-off that we're having to make in terms of how that image is going to look and how it's going to land on your screen. And generally that trade-off is a trade-off between the luminance and the colour or the saturation of the colour. And this will be something you'll be familiar with if you've you know ever edited a photo even you know on Instagram or if you've looked at the exposure on um, on your phone as you've taken a picture of say a sunset is a really good example of that you can choose to make that sunset look bright but what happens is the color starts to disappear or we can make that sunset look darker and the color comes back but it doesn't look as bright and we can see this here and we can look at the sparks and the explosions and I'm also going to look at that red apple on the right hand side now this might not necessarily show up in the video so much, but when you have a look at the game, you'll be able to see this effect yourself. But basically, the lower the luminance that we have, or the lower the, the paper white, which is going to reduce the overall luminance, I suppose, the kind of more colourful things are. And you'll see that that apple over there, when it's very, very low, 150, which we wouldn't probably ever set it on, um, you can see that apple is very distinctly a red apple you can see that the sparks are pretty much all blue and the explosions are a solid orange and a solid yellow. As you increase that, what you'll see is it becomes you know, visibly brighter and we can see that happening. And you'll gradually see that happening. We can see, particularly for me, over there on, and this will depend a little bit on how you display a setup and what it can do, but the apple is becoming less red, still looks bright, it still has enough saturation there for me to perceive that as being a red or a pink colour. And as we continue to push that slider upwards, you'll see that gradually they get brighter and I can see it pushing that information through to my display to make it brighter, but they're actually becoming less colourful. The only actual colour that then begins to be left over is the glow around the outside which was actually less intense than the the interior of that object and if we go right up to the top and we can see this here really really easily those blue sparks are no longer blue they are they are white and the only blue we can really see there is from the dimmer glow that surrounds the road around the outside and this when this is very high here actually this is probably a better you know better representation of maybe how often uh, content would look in, in SDR land. 
if they're trying to make like an explosion look really like blinding and bright they'll tend to sacrifice the color for the brightness however we don't need to do that quite so much in hdr and that's the whole point is that the displays get better those compromises don't need to be made quite as early on but what we're going to do i'm going to leave my game here on 200 i think most of the footage that i will be showing i'm going to be leaving this on on 200. so i've been working on some extra tools to help you guys understand what's going on in each image as we play through these videos so you'll have already seen the lumens light map that i've produced and we'll be continuing to use those in the videos uh, what we will also be using probably a little bit more in future because i've got some bugs to iron out uh, is this graph here which i'm just going to run in the corner for a little bit this is a graph of i suppose what you might describe as metadata so there's two pieces of information here being graphed out simultaneously we have max frame average light level or luminance level uh, this is a measurement of every single pixel in that piece of content in a single frame and then averaged by the number of pixels that are in that frame so this gives us this, this average level so you can see this being graphed uh, as the red line at the bottom and i've set this currently with a scale of 0 to 400 nits on the other side you'll see the max content light level so this is basically the highest value that we're picking up in any frame and this is being done mathematically from the actual data rather than using those luminance light maps now i've got a couple of bugs in regards to this i'm not entirely sure that i've set something up right for this video but it takes such a long time to calculate a long time to run um, i am going to run it in the corner anyhow just don't take pay too much attention to it <laughs> but it's a nice thing to look at for the time being the luminance light maps are all functioning correctly so those those will be those will be accurate so i've also created a, another visualization which I've been working on for ages, but I've never been able to get it quite right, but I'm quite happy with the way that this looks now. So what you're gonna see in the visualization is the black and white, the grayscale stuff that we see is the color space of Rec. 709. Anything that falls within that range that our older displays are capable of doing will just remain black and white in these images. When you can see any kind of color, these are values that are actually sitting outside of that particular color space and are landing in that wider BT 2020 color space and this just allows us to see actually why does this title look natural or why does it look colorful or why does it look good or why does it not look that much different so you'll see this being used more and more often in these videos so let's just carry on watching this for a little bit but this is the intro to the game it's kind of the tutorial uh, which is just kind of showing you the controls really it lands you in a part of the game which really really lends itself super super well for HDR and that is to play the game in a dark times in a dark time to play it at night time to play when it's dark but also to be surrounded by neon lights and TV screens and holograms and all these kind of things these all look really really great in HDR You'll see as we're walking around and jumping around or failing to jump around as I'm doing here that typically we're getting to around about a thousand nits uh, in terms of peak brightness with quite a number of light sources that are... one of the reasons that these neon lights look so great in HDR is because a neon light is has those two things simultaneously it has a really high level of saturation and it has a really high um, amount of luminance and it's always been something that's been difficult to capture and display on an SDR screen. As we were saying earlier there's always that sacrifice between do we make something look bright or do we make something look colourful and when we land in HDR world neon lights, artificial lights, LED lights, all of these things look really really great. So we just saw that little sequence there where there are some sparks going on around there you can see that the very very centre of those sparks are hitting the really really highest peaks uh, however, if I flip that back to look at the WCG map, you'll see that the, those very, very centre parts are actually almost white in colour. So this is the same thing where they've prioritised in that case P2020 
peak brightness over saturation, but again, you can still see a lot of saturation that remains. So one of the technologies that Crackdown 3 uses that really helps to deliver this impactful HDR output is the fact that it's made using a technique called physical based rendering. In a nutshell, physical based rendering is less to do with actually the way that it's rendered I suppose, but it's more to do with how the things that make up the world and make up the scene that you see are constructed and how they're put together. So we can be talking about textures, we can be talking about effects, we can also be talking about lighting as well. So for a game that's using physically based rendering or physical based lighting, which is slightly separate but kind of related to it, the developers or the artists are actually working with props within this game world that represent their real life equivalent. So if we think about two light bulbs that might appear on screen in Crackdown 3, they will have had one constructed that functions with a real life intensity that's let's say equivalent to an, eight, an 80 watt light bulb and then another prop that is configured to behave with the intensity of I don't know, a 200 watt flood, floodlight and then everything in the game world will be built with these different components that all are based around their physical real life counterparts so rather than it being eyeballed or the images being created using tricks and smoke and mirrors to deliver this end visual result much in the way that a painter would do or an artist would do when drawing a, a, a flat two-dimensional scene using paints and colors we're actually creating an image that is based upon the real life behavior of light and the way that light interacts with different types of surfaces and the way that light is produced by different types of objects. So Crackdown 3 also does something that's a little bit more unusual and it's actually made me think harder about some of the other games I've looked at in the past and I'll probably be going back and revisiting some of the other games that have really good results to try and get a better understanding of those too. But what I believe Crackdown 3 is doing that is a little bit different to the majority of other titles is that brightness adjustment that you saw right at the beginning when you first started the game and in the display settings, this isn't doing the same thing that most other games do. Normally, in terms of the controls that you have as a user, there are two controls that you have. You have your peak luminance, you might have your paper white, so it's to maybe three. <laughs> but we have, let's say we have an HDR specific setting and then we have a separate brightness setting. Some get games include this as part of the overall setup of the image. Other games kind of bury it away and you can go and adjust it optionally. But what I generally see with those settings are, is that the reference images don't actually mean anything within the HDR PQ in which you're working and actually when we start to make adjustments to, to that brightness setting we see we're just getting a very typical gamma like um, approach to what it's actually doing to the image so we can typically make the image really really dark and crush everything down it essentially pins the darkest and the brightest point in the image in place or we can lift up the brightness and we can go the opposite way but you'll have seen from the videos I've talked about Resident Evil um, and some other titles in the past, adjusting this in lots of games actually just has a negative effect on the way the image look, looks, maybe raising the blacks too much, raising the shadow detail too much, giving you a very overly grey image, something you might describe as being washed out of colour. Crackdown 3 appears to handle this differently. Rather than having some settings that control the tone mapper and then a separate setting that sits on top of that which then adjusts the gamma or the brightness whatever you want to call it it looks like in this game the brightness is actually having a direct effect on that tone mapper and this means that if we need to elevate the lower bounds of the image the darker image part of the image the near black part of the image the shadow detail because we're actually playing in an environment that is a lot lighter we can actually make an adjustment to this to raise the brightness and it doesn't have this really awful effect on the image quality likewise we can actually drop it right down and as i recommended in the beginning of the video i was settling on about 10 percent in a totally dark room we can actually drop that right down and again, the image retains its overall quality and we actually maximize the dynamic range in doing so. So this is hopefully a sign that games developers and the people responsible for HDR are getting to grips with this stuff. There's maybe more resources available and generally this as a format is, is maturing.
So in terms of what effect you're actually having on the tone mapper, I suspect that this adjustment for the brightness is targeting mid grey, which is essentially meant to be the equivalent level of luminance for uh, skin texture. And it's targeting that part of the image and we're elevating the brightness of the image around that. However, because it's part of the game's display tone mapper, it has a nice smooth transition across the whole image and is actually being designed with that in mind rather than those traditional brightness and gamma settings which don't really target the correct part of the image or are targeting perhaps an SDR image. So actually how you want to be using that setting is adjusting it every time you play for the lighting conditions that you're in. That very very darkest point is going to be the optimal point for HDR. As I've said repeatedly, you should be making sure you play your HDR content in, in a dark room. You basically lose dynamic range and you lose contrast if your ambient lighting is high. And that includes displays that have alleged infinite contrast. Those displays have very poor contrast when you're viewing them in an ambient lighting. And it's the dynamic range that we see is a combination of our display's native capabilities and the environment that we're in. The good news is no matter what type of display you have, you're going to get the benefit of HDR in this game in one way or another. If you've got a display that's really really good at dark colours, you'll see that there's plenty of that to go around. You're going to get that contrast from those, those dark areas. If you've got a display with very very high peak brightness, you're also going to see the benefit of that there. And you're also going to see the benefit of those really saturated brights, which we don't often see in a lot of games. Which makes me wonder if they're doing some cleverness behind the scene to maybe, I don't know, increase the overall saturation in certain parts of the image. Or they're using again a tone mapper that doesn't desaturate the, the upper part of the image, which is also quite common technology looks like pop crackdown 3 on because it looks it looks fantastic and it's really fun as well how can you not enjoy running around a city as a superhuman powered policeman picking up cars and throwing them into the face of bad guys bad guys who aren't super powered so they just crumple into a little ragdoll heap that's really enjoyable and it never fails to amuse me so if you've made it to the end of this video thank you for staying a like is very much appreciated comment a nice comment is appreciated. If you have made it to the end, I don't know, drop the code words into the comment, uh, cabbage hands. Hit subscribe if you like what we do and we'll continue to make these videos for you. Any other suggestions you have about future content, future games you'd like us to cover, mention those down there below as well. I do read all the comments and if I do get a lot of people asking for one particular title, it makes my list of games to look at in future. Many thanks. Ta-ra!